thing about um, Shadow Shaman. You have a hard five position that can threaten towers and push out lanes. Yep. It's such a, a unique thing for, for Shadow Shaman to these heroes. So you're able to deal with five-man lineups really well because your cores don't have to position themselves really far out there in the side lane. Like, they, they can just go ahead and play off of neutrals and stuff, and you let a hard five position be the threatening power on, on the side lanes. Uh, it's a huge uh, positional advantage for you as a team. Yep. Look at this, Benno going for Midas after the Veil. Man, I still think, you know, you talk about now the town now what actually is the best 25? I think the three times more damage and HP is definitely a top three. Those things are actually unkillable, even for carries. Yeah. It's insane. Like, 1,200 HP, I believe. You, uh, you actually can't do anything versus them. We've got a, another ward one in this game, too. The Shadow oh, Shaman Serpent out. Wards plus one attack HP. That doesn't sound like a whole lot. But when you have, like, ten of them, yeah. tags and all that, it is. Oh, Possible gank on Forev, smoke a little bit late, but he just didn't pop the smoke screen. Do you like, uh, we've seen a lot of teams actually go 3-1-1 one, one on Ricky instead of the cloak and dagger. Like, smoke especially is good versus uh, Puck. Yeah, that's, it's my preferred build. Um, after watching other Ricky players, I, I felt like smoke screen, like, as a support, you're more utility than damage anyway. Yeah. Um, but I, I can kind of get... I can kind of get behind Cloak and Dagger um, sometimes based on the game. Yep. If you're doing a little bit better than expected, you get that faster level 7. Because um, honestly, Tricks of the Trade is a, a pretty big damage deal. It is. Especially even if you just get that like one Diffusal Blade, even at like 25 minutes in or something as support, it's insane damage from that. Yeah, and he's going, he went the Treads build as well, which is better for Cloak and Dagger. Because yep. obviously it's based off your agility, so... Yep little more damage early game and I mean Swindle this guy he's I like when Swindle plays when he doesn't feel pressured he went soul ring treads doesn't rush the blink after soul ring gets the more damage oriented build and man he is really far they're just gonna lay the wards down and it's gonna be a fight look at Swindle knows something's up nice. this could be the big fight Chicken's actually here. They blink in. They go in. They get the old up. But Mason Dubu is level six. Luckily, good silence coming out. This Ricky is definitely going to go down. Will Fiero as well. Trying to bring down Bulba, actually. Willie doesn't quite get him. He needs to get the stun off. Abed doesn't quite do it. And now they just farm up wards. So he said it did look like a, a very good setup from Melons, but couldn't quite get in there. Yeah, honestly, that was really high skilled from both teams. Like, yeah. Complexity had a very smart setup with the Earth Shaker. Their execution was really nice as well. Like, they jumped together. Yeah. Swindles didn't throw out the Fisher until um, Z Freak jumped right. on the hero with the smoke. And then they also had the Queen of Pain. Fiero instantly blew his whole entire combination. The Sonic Wave went out immediately. Um, but it still wasn't enough. Dubu was quick enough on the fingers to get that False Promise. And all that damage is rendered useless. Now we see Moog get the nice counter work top. I love how he's not forced to like, he doesn't feel forced to pressure this top tier one. And he's just going to the jungle even when it's this low, just farming up very good efficiency. And he's almost level 12 at 14 minutes in. This guy is going to be a very, very hard kill. And even if you do go on him at level two ult, he just pops out on you. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, when he gets...